Hey everybody, it's Craig Syracuse. Welcome to a new episode of Walk in Faith. We're in the Opera House, but today is extra special. I'm sitting down with my co-host for the day, Monsignor Jamie Gigantiello, but we're excited because we're joined by President and CEO of Goya Foods, Mr. Robert Yunanwe. Robert, it's a pleasure. I have to say the story of Goya is honestly the American dream. The continued growth and success is rooted in the mission to give back and serve our brothers and sisters in the community. It was about seven months ago, I was with Cardinal Dolan in the Bronx. It was during Easter week and your team was feeding thousands of people. And what really struck me was they said they never left the community, they never left the people. And I really believe, and we believe, that is one of the reasons why God continues to bless you, continues to bless Goya and your ministry. So it's an honor to sit down with you. Craig, it's an honor to be with you and Monsignor. Thank you, Bob. Well, most people aren't familiar with the story of Goya Foods from 1936. If you can tell us a little bit about how Don and Carolina, two immigrants, started Goya and had the vision. My grandfather, Don Prudencio and Carolina, uh, he left Spain at 18 years old in 1904 with other Spaniards and, and people from Italy that left tough economic conditions at a young age to take off and, and find new horizons, opportunities, prosperity. And, he ended up going to Puerto Rico. Others went to South America and parts of Central America and uh, eventually made his way to New York, started importing products from Spain, Basque region of Spain, in Duane, on Duane Street in Manhattan. It was a butter and, and egg market at the time. And he uh, was importing products. 1936, when he's 49 years old, actually, and he had gone to school in Albany, he learned English, learned business. He uh, finds himself at the receiving end of, of the Spanish Civil War, and no products were coming in, the products he would bring from Spain for the Spanish community in New York. A broker offered him 500 cases of sardines from Morocco with the Goya name on it. He liked the name because of the uh, Spanish painter, Francisco Goya. Uh, he bought it in the product, he sold it, and uh, it was successful. He liked the name because it had a tie to Spain, and also it was easy to pronounce, easier than Unanwe, which Greg, you did a great job in, in that, by the way. <laughs> that was YouTube. <laughs> Actually, where they best pronounce my name is in Hawaii. They only have 13 letters in the alphabet, and uh, so there's a greater percentage of vowels. The Basque name has a, is loaded with vowels, so uh, they, they do a pretty good job there. It's interesting how he originally brings products in from Spain and the Spanish population or Latino population in the U.S. was small. The Mexicans that were here and the Spaniards that came in. But 1945, after World War II, brought in a huge immigration from Puerto Rico, uh, an economic immigration. 59 brought a political immigration of or migration from Cuba. The 70s, the Dominicans and etc. By the time we reach 2000, we are 35 million Latinos in this country. From then to now, we're double that. So we are the second largest Latino country in the world. They say by 2050, we'll be the biggest group. So we've grown based on receiving immigrants to this country, being the welcome wagon, if you will, not only having a uh, the cuisine that people were looking for, but being family. We call ourselves La Gran Familia Goya, the great Goya family. So we're family to these people. And when you go to a strange country or a new country, like I have when I've traveled, you are more American when you're in Europe. You're more Colombian when you're in here than you are in Colombia. And, and things change. So you, you hang on to your roots. The things that you hang on to are uh, faith, but uh, food, music, and language. I have a lot of hope with the Latino community because they've come here looking for prosperity. They've come here looking for freedom, but they're also God, family, and work-based. I go to, oh, I, that's another long story, but I ended up in Poland at a uh, Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy in Krakow, where St. Faustina lived. And, and those the nuns there take care of trafficked women from 12 to 218. But uh, my parish in Texas is St. Faustina. And of course, the Divine Mercy, the, the diary. I never really knew so much. 
about her. It's been such an incredible experience. So I go to mass, they have a Spanish language mass. It's packed with children, with families. Go to the English language and the, the families are gone. The kids are gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm 68. A lot of the parishioners are, are my age and, and I see a falling off of, of the family. Whereas my hope is that the Latino community, which has God, family and freedom and prosperity as their goals, that we as a nation can move closer to God. You mentioned a lot about your Catholic faith, and I think it's sort of the driving force behind Goya. But one of the things that really caught my eye is Goya Cares, right? And, I, and you call it the light in this dark world. And I've watched a lot of the videos and they really impacted me, the statistics on trafficking, but we're all called to be the light in this dark world. How do you do that, Bob? specifically, if you can give us some examples. I know you were in Poland and Cardinal Dolan told me about it, but you can share some of the ways Goya, as well as you, are this light in this dark world. Well, I first became aware of the industry, if you will, it's a $250 billion industry, 70 million people trafficked. I think that's gone way beyond that. I mean, you have the Gulf Cartel in Mexico or in the border, it's an $80 billion business, and some people are coming in, and then the getaways, they're, they're doing the drugs and the trafficking. And I became aware of the problem of trafficking and, and uh, abuse of children with the movie that Eduardo mm -hmm. Verastegui has made yeah. called Sound of Freedom. And that movie has been, and I'm curious if you know why that movie has not been released. Well, Eduardo's been trying to sell it and uh he just had a deal it, it fell through he's been focused a little bit also on running it politically in mexico again he's he does rosaries every day he's got millions of followers and i was with him visiting pope francis and we did the rosary in front of the vatican which was nice it should be coming out i'm hoping that it does because it's an awareness this highlights the life of tim ballard who goes in and saves these children and they're six years old seven and younger at the core of everything is, is that you are loved. And so if you have a person who has really no self-esteem, they have to understand, they have to receive a message that out of now 8 billion people on this planet, uh, God has chosen every single one and we have value. This is a story, this 14 year old, she likes his girl, her girlfriend's ex-boyfriend and they, it starts an interest there. They start bullying her, bullying her, and they say, here we are, they post this thing, here we are, everybody but you. She committed suicide. It only takes one person, one person to say, hey, I got your back, mm -hmm. I care about you, but it has to start with first caring about ourselves. Every ill in the world is based on, uh, I think, the absence of God. God has created humanity. Humanity has created every way to destroy itself. But more and more every day, we see more and more children. Just they don't think they're valued and they have to know that they're valued. And that's one of the things behind Goya Cares is that we care about you. We're looking at getting that message out. One of the ways is through social media. These kids, they're not watching television. They're, they're so focused 24-7 on this phone that if you're not face-to-face. -face, it's very easy to be bullied and to bully and we're focusing on a message that you are valued. Yes. One of the thoughts I had, actually we had a meeting this morning, was that in our lifetimes we're born, we're really many, many, many people, souls as we develop. As a child, you know, you're dependent 100% on your mother, father, uh, and as you go along, and you might reach a point where you're desperate and you, you don't feel you're, you're valued if you've been rejected and, and all that. And they say, wait, pause a second. We're going to bring in you 10 years down the road where you moved closer to God, you became successful, and you valued yourself and you value others. We send a message, wait a minute, if you're desperate, hold off a second. Mm -hmm. There's hope because you've been chosen by God for something, for purpose. And fast forward, here we are. And that's another person as we develop. And so the light is to send that message that you are valued, that you are cared for. And I, I think that's what's happening in, in this planet is that we're 
the breakdown of the family, the breakdown of somebody to care for you. Mm -hmm. Not that it's justified, but you see kids that are don't behave very well, and and the the people say, "Well, what's the matter with you?" Not what's the matter with what happened to you. So, love is the only thing that that can dis dismantle faith, uh, hate. Bob, you said so many things. I mean, there's so many things we can touch upon. But I mean, I think you're right on when you say that, you know, what's lacking in this world today is the lack of God and the lack of faith. And because that's what it's all about. You know, I love when people come up to me and they say, you know, if there is a God, you know, why is there evil in the world? I mean, you hit upon it. You know, evil is the lack of God. The lack of faith. God doesn't bring evil into the world. Evil exists when we turn away from God. A person like you, when you talked about bringing a little light into our darkened world, I mean, a person of such success as you and your family, it has to be rooted in faith because it's not just about making money, it's about giving back. It's about making a difference in this world. Even the start of your company, it wasn't just to open up a, com a company to make money, it was to serve the needs of people here that wanted to feel at home. They wanted to eat the foods that they were brought up on. You took it to another level. Now, with your success, you want to give back to society and help society, especially human trafficking. That, that is a, an issue that really affects so many people, especially young people. And a lot of it is because of the lack of, and the breakdown of the family. And, you know, in this country and throughout the world, you know, you look at so many families and immigrants that have come here. The ones that have really become successful are the ones that are rooted in faith and have deep family values and good work ethics. And I think you hit it right on the head. And the Hispanic communities that come from all over the world, that's what they have. And, you know, I think we have to do our best to help them as much as possible. I was privileged growing up. Privileged not from a money standpoint because we didn't always have money. Privileged to have a father and a, and a mother. Uh, my father wanted to be a priest. I'm one of six. Uh, he died at 48 years old with leukemia. But uh, he was so strong in his faith and also my mother who was a stay-at-home mom. So I had the blessing of a mother and father who were there caring for us. They protected us. You know, we lived in a kind of a, not a bubble, but these kids are exposed to so much garbage these days. Mm -hmm. A sister of mine who's one year younger than me, my father asked her, you know, Mary, what, what's your goal in life? And she said, I want to be a nurse. And she became a nurse. He said, no, 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 what's your, what's your goal in life? She says, I want to be a nurse. She says, no, your goal in life is salvation. Mm -hmm. He was such an incredible light and mentor, left a gaping hole. But what he did leave us was uh, his faith and her, my mother's faith, that our goal in life is salvation, the rest. And, you know, people say, hey, you got to be happy. That's your goal. No, your goal is not to be happy. Your goal is to do for others. You do for others, that's real happiness. Other than that, it's it's fleeting and it's 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 temporary. Having those people in my lives and, and others was really a privilege, a blessing that a lot of people don't have today. I mean, some of my kids, my grandkids, they don't go to church. You need to go to church. You need to get that nourishment, feeding the feeding the mind, feeding the, the body, and feeding the soul. The Holy Eucharist is just that nourishment. We're blessed to have that and, and to, but that faith needs to be spread. It starts with the kids. They need to be valued.
So Bob, what would you say, I mean, the young child, but what has changed? I, I've been really researching this, but what has changed in society? Some of us say it's culture. We could say it's the breakdown of family, but I'm trying to discover what's beneath that. What's driving culture? Because I mean, I travel, we all travel, we were just in Israel last week, and you see there is a breakdown. What do you think is driving sort of this disconnect to, uh, to faith in general? I would say that it's economic. The argument on abortion, rape, incest, the health of the mother. Take that away. Take all that away. The extreme cases. What you have is economics. Oh, uh, they won't be able to afford it. You know, it, it becomes an economic decision. The victim in an abortion is the mother because there's pressure from all these societies. It's not mothers spending hundreds of millions of dollars to promote abortion. They're the victims, I tell you, and, and I know women, you abort and you can justify it, but that affects you for life. Just like a child that's abused, just once they're affected for life. And so it's easy for a guy or a family member or other people to justify it, they can walk away unharmed. They walk away, but the woman doesn't walk away unharmed. No matter what, see, the, the justification, they don't walk away unharmed. We cannot judge anyone. That's for God to do. But I pray for these women that are a, really victims, victims of a society that pushes them to make decisions that otherwise they may not make. Bob, I have a question for you. I mean, obviously you are rooted in faith. And because of that, you created Goya Cares, Goya Gives. How has that affected, you know, your other board members and other people that are part of your corporation? Do they agree with you or do they, do they believe in the mission that you, you, you set out to do? Yes, my grandfather had four sons. Uh, my father is one of those sons. They grew up in the faith where they might disagree a little bit if, if it goes a touch of politics, which, um, you know, I did go in front of the White House in July 9th of 2020. I was offering a couple million pounds of food. I was also made a commissioner on the White House Commission for Hispanic Prosperity. And I said one word that create, that gave me a platform. And the reason I'm even talking to you today, I said the word blessed. I said we were blessed. And the next day for weeks, I was on the screen. And I did an interview where this woman in San Antonio, uh, Shannon Hassey, uh, she said, hey, is, he, is Bob Catholic? Will you take a rosary? She sent us, yes. we're still getting rosaries today. We're over 100,000. We took them to Poland and the Ukraine. Sending out prayer, and now we're sending with our rosaries. When we do food donations, we're sending rosaries also. And we have a, a card on it with a QR code and how to do the rosary and pray. One way or another, we have to move closer to God. We have to be prosperous, free, and we're losing our connection with God. Great. And we need to change that. And that's God shaking us and saying, hey, wake up, move closer to me. I agree, Bob. I mean, that's the reason why we wanted to sit down with you. One of the reasons was Cardinal Dolan actually told me that story. I think it was Holy Thursday. And just to see your team and how they're committed to not just the diocese, but the community in Bronx. I mean, we spent the day with them and it really touched me. And this is an honor for us to sit with you. And we do look forward to coming to your facility in New Jersey, which is close to my house. Monsignor Jamie and I would love the opportunity to meet with you and, and find a way that we can collaborate because you're doing God's work. And I know Monsignor's doing that and I'm trying to. So <laughs> we, we really thank you and, and appreciate this time. The word bless came on my list from the Holy Spirit. I don't know why he chose me, but we all have to be instruments. Mm -hmm. We have to, it's a call to duty. We have to have courage. And the Holy Spirit is courage, so we can accomplish that. But it's so big, and the only thing that's going to defeat that is, is love, faith, and, and, and courage. Amen. Bob, thank you so much for this opportunity. Really, it's such an inspiring interview just to sit down with you and hear how Goya and Goya cares, and you have really followed what God has placed in your heart and, and allowed God to use you as a vessel to spread his word, spread the gospel throughout the world, through your products, through your ministry. We really appreciate it. You've inspired us and impacted us greatly. Bob, thank you so much. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Walk in Faith. Always remember, you have the ability to inspire and evangelize through words and actions. God bless you. And Monsignor, thank you. Thank you.
Thanks for watching Walk in Faith. Please log on to EmmausBrooklyn.org and please support us. Help us continue to bring the word of God through events at the Emmaus Center, through shows like Walk in Faith. Thank you and God bless you.